Welcome today to the webinar brought to you by the Ideal Institute at Loyola Marymount University and the MyTech Tool Belt podcast. The Ideal Institute is located here at Loyola Marymount University in the School of Education. I'm your host today, Shannon Spaldo. I'm the director of the Ideal Institute. And today our, our guest is uh, Brent Warner. And he's going to be talking about using artificial intelligence like ChatGPT in the classroom from a teacher's lens. Um, also on our webinar today is Christine Navarro. She's my colleague here at the Ideal Institute, and she'll be managing the chat and the Q&A section of this webinar. And uh, as you know, there are closed captionings. You can hit the closed caption section. Um, and you should be able to see captions on the screen during this event. To all of you guys that are here today, we appreciate you. Um, I'm going to take the time to introduce uh, my uh, friend. I like to say Brent's my friend. I think we've known each other long enough now. Um, Brent Warner. Um, Brent is an award-winning community college professor, and he focuses on integrating technology and innovation into the language learning process. Um, in 2021, he was named a higher ed... IT Influencer by EdTech Magazine. Congratulations on that, Brent. And he's the co-host of the Higher EdTech Podcast, uh, focusing on integrating technology into college and university classrooms. Um, Brent will share his social media um, during this session, but he can be found on LinkedIn, Twitter, and other platforms at Brent G. Warner. So Brent and I know each other um, from our work uh, with Q, and uh, we've sat on a couple of boards together, and we've... Um, I'm, I'm so excited that he agreed to talk to us today. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn us over to Brent. All right. Thank you, Shannon. And thank you, Christine, for keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good to, uh, well, not see you, as Shannon said. <laughs> good to uh, be here together with you. Um, uh, please do feel free to uh, leave uh, information or ideas in the chat. Uh, you guys can chat with each other as we go through this. Uh, I'm pretty informal in terms of the presentation process, so um, you guys can have a side chat going for sure, and then the question and answer as well. Um, in the meantime, I am going to open up our presentation and we're going to get started. Uh, so today we're talking about uh, using AI in the classroom. Um, I think part of the reason maybe uh, Shannon reached out to me is because um, yeah, I'm actually integrating uh, uh, chat GPT directly into my classroom with my students uh, in, in class this semester. So it kind of as soon as we saw it, we looked at it, we had a kind of <laughs> a bit of a moment on what, what we should do. And I, and we said, uh, let's do it. Let's, let's figure out what actually is happening here and not just guess at it, but actually try to use it with our students. Um, and so uh, today I'll be more heavily talking about uh, the generative text uh, AI type of thing. So I'll, I'll probably be referring to chat GPT, but that also includes, um, you know, Bard and Bing and all the other, uh, all the other ones. Um, and of course, we can talk a little bit about the image generations and those types of things as well. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be starting with uh, the conversation on text. Um, and just keep in mind that this is so brand new for everybody. Uh, and this is basically a, an entire universe exploded uh, upon us uh, within uh, the last couple of months. And it, it, there is so much to know there. Don't trust anybody who says they're an expert. Um, there are no real experts out there on this. There's lots to learn, lots to figure out. Um, and we are really at, still at step one, even though this stuff is moving super fast. So um, as Shannon mentioned, I'm a professor at Irvine Valley College, so if, uh, if you're at uh, Loyal Marymount, uh, you're kind of just up the road from us here, but if you're somewhere else, um, this is in uh, kind of in the middle or south Orange County area. So today we're going to talk about a few things. Um, we're going to be looking at reactions to ChatGPT and AI. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, concepts, ideas about using it in your classroom. So that's directly with your students. And then also some ideas about using AI um, in your office. So kind of back end work or other things that you might be interested in. Um, uh, as Shannon mentioned that I'll be uh, leaving some time at the end and I will be rushing because there's so much to to try to cover inside of that time so I might skip over little bits that are uh, you know uh, something that you might be interested in so please do feel free to ask the questions if I move too quickly past something. 
All right, so let's start with the uh, the big conversation, and I think this is kind of where we uh, where we deal with everything uh, to start is uh, reactions to ChatGPT and AI. So uh, maybe many of you know that this was actually launched on the last day of November uh, last year, um, so uh, November. 30th, I think, and then uh, and then it's kind of taken on a whole life of its own. So some of you might feel like this is everywhere all the time, but really we're still less than six months into this. So um, I think that a lot of people felt this uh, when we stepped in and we first saw it. So if you remember this scene from Terminator 2, uh, you know, this is where Sarah Connor first encounters the Terminator, which we'll call uh, our artificial intelligence for the day. Um, and she really, you know, like is is shocked. She knows that she thinks this thing is dangerous to her. She's uh, wanting to run away to get away from it. Um, and I definitely had a lot of teachers, uh, my colleagues and friends who kind of had the same reaction here. It's just like quick run, <laughs> quick get out of the way. I don't know what to do with this thing. It's definitely dangerous and it's definitely a threat to me. Um, and so if you had that, uh, that feeling and that reaction, um, let's keep in mind that that is absolutely understandable. Uh, so this is um, a reality. And so uh, I recognize that I kind of forced the language here a little bit, uh, but we're, I'm calling it the general response in exhausted faculty, which is G-R-I-E-F. <laughs> um, so you might've been dealing with the different stages of grief as you kind of understood and saw what's going on with uh, AI. So uh, starting with kind of uh, Sarah Connor's reaction here is the denial, right? So we're said, no, this is not a thing. This is, oh my God, that we can't possibly have this. Um, there's all sorts of problems, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of people said things like, oh, this isn't that impressive. I can tell that the writing is different or <laughs> whatever it is. And I say, well, okay, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be as, you know, uh, as eloquent as Baldwin or as witty as Twain, you know, uh, but it can get to those points. So uh, the denial was an interesting uh, concept. And then of course we had people dealing with anger, right? And they're saying, absolutely not, we have to block this. And there are school districts that are blocking these, these kinds of technology as well. Um, next, we got into some bargaining, um, you know, some of the concepts that students might be uh, using this at home, but we don't have to use it. Uh, we can just go back to using blue books in our classes, right? Um, that's what we're going to do is just everybody's going to write with pencil and paper inside of these and, and maybe that'll make it okay for us. Um, then, of course, <laughs> the depression. Uh, so, you know, why do I even have a job if this can do everything? Do I need to be a teacher? What's going to happen to all of this, et cetera? Um, and then finally, uh, some acceptance, you know, hey, maybe there are some actual some ways to use this. Now, I just want to kind of um, uh, validate that whatever your place in this line is, is 100% okay. So I go up and down all the time. Uh, I am not always in the acceptance zone. Sometimes I go back to denial and sometimes, you know, when a student uses it in a way that I'm kind of, you know, that's questionable, like I'll go into anger or, or different things. And so, um, so there's no perfect place for all of this, but we do kind of move through cycles, uh, just like with any other uh, level of something that's totally new and totally unexpected. Um, but at the same time, I want to take a look at that concept and really kind of ask ourselves, well, what is our job as educators? Uh, and really, no matter what your field is, our job is to prepare students for a future that does not exist, right? Um, and so we can't really do that if we're kind of burying our heads in the sand and not willing to talk about and not willing to engage with our students around these conversations. Um, as Shannon mentioned, I, did, I, uh, I do a, a podcast and we interviewed one of my colleagues about it. And I really like what she said, uh, which was that we need to work with the students we have and not the student I was. Was, which is, you know, that that really speaks exactly <laughs> to kind of the idea that I want to communicate here, um, which is we cannot use our previous standards of expectations, right? Um, so the real question is, then is what is our responsibility? Come with me if you want to live. 
<laughs> so uh, come with me if you want to live, right? You're, if you're going to survive as a teacher moving forward, you have to you have to be willing to put out your hand to reach out to grab the Terminators uh, and, and get some support from it um, and really see what's going to happen here. So um, I make this claim, and I know some, for some people it's a little bit too bold, but I do believe that we actually have the moral imperative to teach our students about AI, right? Because they are going to be exploring with this stuff. They are going to be looking at it, trying to figure out what they can do, what they can get away with, what they can, how they can use it for their learning. And so if we're not out there talking to our students and saying, oh, well, you just can't use it, or, um, you know, we don't, we don't do that in my class. Well, you are hiding something from your students where they actually need to get some guidance on it and they actually need to get some ideas about what is appropriate and so if we're not willing to talk about uh, these things with our students then really what are we doing for them so uh, before we get into uh, some of the uses in the class, I want to do a little bit of curiosity look. Um, so if you remember this scene, we've had uh, Edward Norton, um, or uh, sorry, Edward Furlong's character uh, kind of starting to recognize, well, this thing maybe isn't so dangerous. He starts poking the Terminator in the face and starts exper experimenting and exploring with it a little bit. And so I want to do just a brief um, couple of things, places where we can really see uh, AI in use. So uh, the first thing, um, this is, uh, there are some new plugins. So these things are coming out all the time. And there are ways to speak directly to chat GPT. So um, this will be probably integrated into uh, these services in the near future. But right now you can get some Chrome extensions. So I grabbed this one called speak to chat GPT. And so what you can do is, uh, if I turn this on, here. So this is ChatGPT, and I'll turn on this uh, extension. Talk to me. Give me the history of Loyola Marymount University. Loyola Marymount University, LMU, is a private Jesuit and Marymount University located in Los Angeles, California. USA. Okay, et cetera, et cetera. You, <laughs> you can get the idea here. But uh, quickly, so if I need to uh, speak, uh, it's probably going to hold on. It's going to try and. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry. Here's a quick summary. Um, so if I need to speak to it, uh, it can actually speak back to me. So no, we're, all, we're already getting access for accessibility, um, ways to uh, use it through talking. And we'll see lots of these different integrations. They're already coming along as we go. Uh, but if talking to it is something important, or perhaps if you're doing a debate class or something like like that, uh, this might be something to experiment with. Um, next, if you've seen this one, uh, this was a student who combined uh, chat GPT with 3D printing. And so <laughs> if you can see what's going on here, people are like, well, we're just going to take it back to the blue book and we're going to have people writing by hand. Because uh, uh, uh. <laughs> guess what? Students are just going to figure out something like this. Now, this student, I don't know what they were writing about, but I don't care. They're getting an A in my class just for figuring out how to do all of this stuff. It is amazing. But take a look at what they actually wrote in here. This is like a, a TikTok video or something. Uh, 3D printer does my homework that chat GPT wrote, right? So they didn't, so they did all this time setting things up and getting getting the 3D printer connected to their pen and doing all the things, but really and, and the writing and the ideas are still chat GPT and then look like they're written by hand by the students. So we can say goodbye to the idea of, well, I know that they're doing their own work because it's handwritten mm, perhaps not um now I want to show you briefly this combination that I did when you're really combining ChatGPT with other AI. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'll give you about uh you know 20 seconds or so you can get a sense of what we're talking about here. Hey folks, so um let's talk about verb tenses in English. I know I know they can be a bit of a pain to learn, but trust me it's worth the effort. First of all, Understanding verb tenses allows you to communicate more clearly. When you're speaking or writing in English, using the correct tense helps. Okay. So you can clearly see here, of course, that head is not me actually talking, right? That is a photograph that I uploaded to this DID website. Um, and this is partly my fault because one, I have this beard that uh, it, the AI still is not properly recognizing or moving. So you can see how the movement kind of cuts across the top of my head. Um, and I'm also tilted to the side and they said, hey, please make it forward facing, but you can still get a sense of what's coming, right? What's coming down the line. So I was able to basically deep fake myself. Now you also heard uh, me talking. That is not me talking. 
So I'm just going to play that for you one more time for about just a few seconds. This is not me. Even listen to my voice and then listen to its voice. Hey folks, so um, let's talk about verb tenses in English. I know, I know they can be a bit of a pain to learn, but trust me, it's worth the effort. That's not my voice. I uploaded my voice into a system and it recognized it, it processed it through with about three minutes of my voice in there. And then whatever text I typed, it actually wrote, spoke out that text. The text is also not my voice. That's done through ChatGPT, right? And so ChatGPT, I asked it, hey, please create a two-minute speech about how, uh, you know, the importance of verb tenses. I said to make it slightly informal, throw in a few ums and wells and things like that to make it sound like a more natural voice. Then I plugged that into um, uh, the the voice command uh, or the, the voice uh, duplicating service and it had my voice reading it out and then I uploaded my voice reading service to this DID with my picture and then it created the video of all of these things. So uh, many of you over the years I'm sure have seen deep fake conversations. I just deep faked myself uh, at the basic level, right? It's getting better and better and better. And so all of these things have some really interesting uh, potential on both sides, right? And of course I can see the fears on this and I can see the possibilities here, right? Um, there, there are all sorts of uh, interesting ways to potentially look at this, so. Hey folks, um, so. Uh... so Today, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about using AI with your students. Um, so again, here we're talking mostly uh, the chat services, but uh, you can look at it in any way that you like. So um, everybody I know is coming from different backgrounds. Uh, just to be clear, my background is uh, I'm an ESL teacher. Um, uh, as I said, I work at the community college. Um, I teach academic writing for my students. So it's uh, pre-transfer level academic writing, helping students get set up. And then of course, I also teach um, uh, adult ESL classes for things like conversation or other uh, individual skills. Um, so some of this is coming, of course, from my background and the things that I'm actually working with. But I do want to encourage you to think broadly and see, well, OK, that's not my field, but maybe some of these ideas can be tied into what we're talking about here. Um, so several of the uh, possible ways to use AI with your class. Um, number one is that you can use it to make examples. Um, so students can actually go in and ask ChatGPT to create examples of complete assignments. Uh, so we in the past, you know, as teachers, we, we wanted to provide our students with um, uh, you know, some of these ideal examples and how things might look. And so this can actually be a way for students to do it for themselves. Uh, I understand, I'm sure that coming up in the chat is the plagiarism <laughs> conversation. Um, we'll, we'll hold on to that one for a little bit. I'm sure I'll answer some questions about it at the end. Um, but, uh, but they can get themselves started and see like, well, what's this supposed to look like? Because I have had students and you know your students that are really genuine and really trying to figure things out. And I, then I said, well, hey, why don't you make an example and see what comes up and they're like oh okay I can do that <laughs> right and then then they went in and looked and they're saying oh okay that's not probably what I would write but I get an idea now I, I have a starting point I, I can kickstart a little bit inside of there so um so just to get kickstarted and, and I'm using it all the time for kickstarting myself in terms of getting ideas or starting with something it's like I know what I would want to say but that blank canvas is a little bit heavy for me so let's start with a little bit of information um, next up is self-analysis. So I actually had my students do this. Um, they uh, did a writing assignment in class, and then I put into chat GPT, I said, well, please analyze this, uh, this text based on this prompt. Uh, please give some feedback around things like grammar or whatever else it is. Um, and so I asked it to do a few things and I said, is it ready? And then I cut and pasted my students' work directly into chat GPT underneath it. Then the, uh, the bot went and analyzed it and gave some feedback and I did not mess with it. So uh, so you can go in and say, well, I think that's right. I think that's wrong. But that wasn't really my goal. My goal was to actually give them back directly what ChatGPT had said to me. So I actually copied and pasted from, from ChatGPT right back into, we use Google Docs in my class. So I pasted that feedback right back into the student's document. And I said, okay, this is what ChatGPT said. Now you're going to go and look at what ChatGPT he said, you're going to look at your own writing and you're going to compare and analyze and see if you 
agree with what ChatGPT is telling you here. So this is actually giving the students some motivation to look at it because they're going, oh, this thing is analyzing my work and now I'm reanalyzing it back and telling if it if it's right or if it's wrong, right? And so they're actually motivated to look at that and then to see. So um, I had some examples from students who said, well, it gave me feedback, some grammar feedback that I think is wrong. So for example, um, <laughs> for some reason, and it's getting better, but it did tell my student to capitalize words like they had capitalized the H in homework in the middle of a sentence. Um, and ChatGPT said, good job on capitalizing that word. And it's like, well, no, that's not a good job. That's wrong, <laughs> right? Um, but then they could go in and say, well, hold on a second. I think from these lines, yeah, I didn't notice it when I did it. But now that ChatGPT pointed out it, that particular thing, I went to look at it again and then I realized that that was actually not correct. Um, so that so you can have your students working back and forth to use that as a way for them to understand what's going on with their work. Uh, you can also stylize the work. So um, if you uh, one of the popular things that a lot of people got started with was uh, making rap battles, right? Uh, so you could actually stylize the content that you do in your class into kind of more fun poems, screenplays, whatever. Um, and then you can have the students go back through that and start analyzing, well, what's missing, right? Because if you turn something into a poem or if you turn something into a rap battle, well, then it, by necessity, parts are gonna get dropped out, right? In order to force the rhyme together or in order to get the language going in the way that it needs to go, it's going to make some adjustments. It's going to simplify the information. So then they can go, well, I got these big ideas and, the, and this is kind of fun to see this. And also they're going to see what's missing, right? And if you haven't done uh, the rap battles or any of these things, we, we can do a quick one here just for fun. Um, where's the chat? Does anybody want to drop two, uh, two famous characters that we can have a rap battle with inside of here? Let's take a look. I'll write the prompt up while you guys come up with two uh, two characters. Nicholas Cage and Snoop Dogg. Okay, let's see. I think it's two G's on Snoop Dogg. All right. <laughs> I don't think I should probably try to wrap this itself, but uh, but I will let you kind of look at it, right? Yo, it's Cage back in the game. I'm the one and only, let's, let's see right here. Uh, I'm the one and only with a different kind of fame. I'm the king of the screen and I can do it all from comedy to drama. I've answered the call, but Snoop Dogg, you ain't got nothing on me. I've got an Oscar and you're just a wannabe. You can wrap all you want, but when it comes to acting, I'm the only one who's truly outstanding. Hold up, hold up. It's the dog. I'm in the house. I'm the king of the rap game and I'm going to show you how. I've got the beats. I've got the rhymes and the flow. And when it comes to, well, uh, so yeah, have to be careful. <laughs> uh, so be careful about some of that language inside of there. I guess I guess that's my fault for. Uh, uh, no, it's, I'm going to blame it on Stephanie for choosing Snoop Dogg there. But uh, but here you go, right? So you can see what's going on with some of these possibilities. Um, you can also do debates. Uh, so you can actually have ChatGPT or any of these programs uh, take one side of an argument and then ask it to take the opposite side, right? And so you can just kind of go back and forth and really figure out what's going on. Um, another thing that I saw that was interesting in the news today, I think, is that uh, some of these people, and please, please, please be very careful. Some people are actually starting to use this for... Um, uh, they're talking about the, the potential for this for mental health because it's always going to be friendly to you if, if it's programmed in the right way. And so I'm, I'm very wary about it, but I'm interested to see what people are doing with that. So, uh, so you could get some information there. And then, of course, clarification. So students can use it to clar uh, get clarification on unclear ideas, things that they don't know about or that they maybe should have learned in a previous semester. And then they're going to do some just-in-time teaching. Um, and there are some really interesting options coming up in the future with this type of idea uh, where where we are uh, if you if you're familiar with class.com which is kind of like a zoom overlay they actually are already starting to play with this where uh, the text uh, is transcribed from the speaking from the teacher speaking in, in an online class and the students can then click on individual words and then get the feedback from chat GPT where it's not interrupting the teacher uh, to to um, uh, so that they can get the feedback and say, well, what does that word mean? Or what is that concept about, right? So that we're going we're gonna to see more of that kind of regular integration inside of everything. So I want to show you one of these examples. Um, in my class right now, we are... Um, 
we're reading Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, and so if you're familiar with this book, um, you can kind of, you, you might know, know what's going on here, but it's, a, you know, it's a story of censorship and, and um, uh, you know, a, a dystopian society. And so what I'm doing with my students, one of our activities is uh, that they're doing character analysis. And so they're trying to learn who the characters are and get deeper insights into the characters. And so what I did was I gave them a prompt to put into chat GPT. And that's the prompt on the right hand side of the screen that you see here. Um, and they could change the character's name. So if they were not wanting to talk about Beatty, if they were not wanting to learn about Clarice or if about Faber or whoever they're interested in, uh, they could change the names of these things. But um, but here, let's take a look at what happens when we do this, because I'll put the same prompt in. We'll do a new chat. <clears throat> so is, this is a role play setup here. And um, I'm using chat GPT uh, 3.5. Four is uh, more accurate, but uh, it's a little bit slower. And so for our presentation purposes, we'll see what happens here. So. Um, uh, I am taking the role of Montag, um, ChatGPT is taking the role of Beatty, uh, and I'm going to start asking it some questions, right? So um, let's see, uh, why do we burn books? <laughs> let's keep it easy. Uh, we burn books because they are a source of confusion and dissent. Books contain ideas that can be dangerous to, st uh, to the stability of our society, and we cannot allow them to be circulated. By burning books, we eliminate the possibility of these dangerous ideas spreading and causing unrest. Okay, so that's pretty clearly Beatty uh, out of the book, if you're familiar with it. But we can get a little bit more in depth, right? So um, why do you know so much about books if we're not supposed to read them? As a fire captain, nope. <laughs> it is my it job out. to be knowledgeable about the books we burn. Um, so he's talking about his role inside of here, and it's important to stay vigilant. But then I'm going to say, uh, do you ever read the books? No, Montag, I do not. Reading them would be against the law and would undermine the system, right? My job is to enforce the law, not to break it. And so, again, similar to what we were talking about before um, with students analyzing their own work, they can also analyze this information and say, well, I feel like my understanding of Beatty was a little bit different than the way that he was talking to me through chat GPT. And so then the students are getting some insights into the character, but they're also using critical thinking to really figure out what's going on and whether or not they think that that's accurate. Um, sometimes it'll pr bring up information that maybe that character shouldn't know. So for example, um, I talked, uh, I did this with Faber, um, who's the old man in the in the story, and he started talking about Clarice, but they never interacted in the book, right? So he said, so I had students going, oh, well, hold on, they never met each other. What's the, so, so this is not correct information. Um, so you can continue to play with, <laughs> sorry, it's going to want to uh, keep going on here. So um, so this is a real way that students are using it. And then, then they're pulling that information and using that in my class, we're doing character analyz analyzers, we're doing a reading circles. And so they're all presenting on different parts, but they're using this as a way to get themselves started and say like, what are the ideas that are coming up through AI that we think are right, that we think are wrong? What, what insights are we getting into the character that maybe we hadn't thought about before in the first round of reading? Um, so these are a few ideas of ways that you can um, you can use uh, some of these things directly with your students, right? So getting your students into there, getting them logged in, actually playing with this technology. Um, and I will say my students over and over again have kept coming up and saying, thank you for talking to me about this. Thank you for sharing this with us and, and being willing to, uh, to engage in it because my other teachers aren't talking about it at all. And they, don't, you know, and I, I'm not sure what to do in their class, in their cases, right? And so, um, so this is actually really a powerful way to get them started and make and also to build some trust between you and the students to say hey we're working on something together here it's not a question of you know what are you doing and what am i doing and then am i, am I chasing you down as the plagiarism police on on ai conversation so i i uh this this is giving you a hint into what i'm going to respond to if the plagiarism questions come up which i'm sure are there so um let's flip over here to um uh 
to uh, the AI in the workflow. So, um, so we talked about using it directly with your um, directly with your students, uh, and now we're going to talk a little bit about pulling it in on the back end, right? So the things that you might use in your office, maybe setting up your lessons or all of those types of things. There's a lot of different. Um, there's a lot of different parts inside of here that you can use to actually help you save time and maybe to help you better connect with your students. So um, a few of these things, I think the way that I like to think about it is that ChatGPT can essentially be your TA, right? Um, and so it can help you get through a lot of the work or the grind work that maybe you wouldn't be wanting to do for yourself all the time. Um, and so this is a great way to, uh, to get yourself, you know, going with all of these work. So starting with email. Um, you can absolutely have it write an email or if you use Canvas or whatever your, um, uh, your LMS is, uh, you can have it build up announcements reminding students about homework, campus events, etc. Right. Sometimes we sit there for an hour and uh, in the in the pre talk, Shannon and I were talking about that too. And she's like, oh, you know, I've got to write this long email. <laughs> right. And, and it's like, I know I'm going to spend a long time kind of looking at it and picking it apart and picking apart my writing. And so really, this can actually very clearly help you write and get started with your email. And then um, I will point out that one thing for that has been a common conversation is as experts, we can go in and we can make adjustments to what these technologies are building for us, right? So we have the, the understanding of what we're looking for. So I would never trust it just to create something for me. But once it starts, then I can copy it and I can say, okay, I, don't, I probably wouldn't say it this way. I'm going to adjust these ideas. Um, but it's still going to save me a lot of time uh, in comparison to spending 20 minutes trying to figure out all the things that I want to say in the email. Maybe I'll spend six minutes on it and I'll, I'll the 30 seconds to create create it, and then a few minutes just to go clean up the issue. So email is a great way to save some time and save some effort. Um, you can also use it to simplify your writing. So if you want to make it easier to understand something, um, you might have students that are working at different levels. And so you want to say, hey, I'm going to present this to you in a different Lexile level reading. So again, this, of course, for me is uh, ESL stuff, but you might have students that say, I don't understand what's going on here. Um, so for example, if you use a service like Newzella, which you can click a button and read at different Lexile levels, starting from the highest and then moving down into the uh, into the lower levels, you can do the same thing for your students. So if they're struggling with understanding the ideas, or if you said, uh, you could even just say, um, you know, go through this paper and uh, define any complicated words that are on the academic word list. So they can actually put it in parentheses right next to the word. So then students don't have to go chasing and looking in the dictionary or whatever else it is that they're trying to figure things out. Um, I think I made up this word, friendlify. <laughs> so if you are a direct person, uh, if you're if you kind of tend to be a little bit curt in your emails or in your in the way that you present yourself, uh, you can ask ChatGPT to just write it for you in a nicer, friendlier way, and it will do that for you. So so again, you say, hey, my students kind of you know are of a different generation. The way that they want to be spoken to is in this tone, right? Uh, and so you can actually ask it to try to adjust for those tones and uh, and for that information so it can really soften the tone um, and make you feel a little bit better especially if you get like me and you're like why aren't you guys doing this yet <laughs> right you know like you're reaching out to your admin or whoever it is and you're like you're like i shouldn't probably send that let me uh let me uh sim let me make it a little bit nicer you can run it through these and then um and have it make it your word your information nicer uh, lesson planning. Oh my God, if you haven't done this, we're going to do this right now. So uh, so if you haven't played with the lesson planning, it is unbelievable. So let's give it a try here. Um, anybody in the chat want to drop in something that we can build a lesson plan? I'll do a, I'll build a one hour lesson plan, um, but you guys can give me the topic so we can see what it comes up with. A one hour lesson plan for in uh, for uh, about there we go the gold rush. Um, uh, this is for an in person class where students can interact with each other. 
Okay, so, <laughs> oh my God, it's so fast. It's so amazing. <laughs> here we go. Uh, if you haven't seen this, it's, it's unbelievable. So here it is. Here's the lesson plan. Objective, to teach students about the California Gold Rush and its impact on American history. Materials, pictures, maps of the Gold Rush, video clips, worksheets, gold panning kits, right? Uh, gold panning kit optional. Um, uh, here's what you're going to do for the introduction. Then here's your body of work. And then here's your conclusion. You can also go in and ask it, right? Okay, um, where can I get pictures and maps of the gold rush? Um, so here it's going to tell me some places. Uh, very soon it's going to be start, starting to give me links into all of these. It's not quite here in ChatGPT, but if you're using Bard or if you're using Bing, um, those ones are absolutely, they're already starting to show you links and resources and all sorts of things that you can get inside of there. And then it's giving you good resources like Library of Congress. I hope people here already know about that but but, uh, but if you're if, if you're like oh yeah i forgot right let me go check that right and so it'll give you good resources um but this alone here by the way notice how simple this request was we didn't even put in standards that we're looking for so we could go put in isti standards or um if i know that there might be some k-12 people on there so if you're talking about common core standards or whatever else it is you're doing you can put all those in and it'll tell you how you're hitting those goals again please do go back and check it. Don't just trust it and start running, running the lesson without, without verifying, but it's really powerful. And sometimes I, I've done this once uh, with my classroom, I'm like, oh my gosh, the thing I was planning on doing today uh, isn't going to work. And so I said, please plan me a lesson for my conversation class. And it built me a really cool thing. We played with it and we did it in my class with my students. Um, and it was pretty successful. So um, last part here is letters of recommendation. Um, you know, this one I know there's mixed feelings about. Uh, I, I went back and looked at my own letters of recommendation uh, to, to for my students in the past, and I'm like, oh my God, I kind of I kind of say the same thing <laughs> over and over again for a lot of my students. It's like I'm just spending hours on these things and I'm being kind of repetitive in here. And so I'm I, I have mixed, I do have mixed feelings. I want to be quite clear here because you know I want to respect the student and their work and all of those things, but also I if I'm like, well, do I always say the same thing or do I need to kind of make adjustments inside of here? Um, so it can can be a good help inside of this, uh, especially if the student tells you, you know, a lot of times professors will say, well, give me three or four key things that you want me to make sure I'm talking about, then they can, it can build it into this as well. All right. Um, then we've also got, this is where I really see some superpower uh, for, uh, for chat GPT is custom content. So if uh, you guys like, like we are, are focusing on the OER conversation, the open educational resources, or the um, uh, the ZTC, the zero textbook cost for your classes, so that students don't have to pay three hundred dollars for a book uh, <laughs> to 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 come to class for one semester. Um, these are all things that I've been working for in my classes, is to get rid of extra expenses for my students. And there's always the conversation. It's like, well, I want to build out this content. I want to build out these things, but we just don't have the time for it, right? You say, oh okay, so I ended up using the same thing that I wasn't so happy with last time, and now I'm doing it again. Um, let's look at the, the actual reality of published textbooks. So it takes anywhere from two to six years for our standard textbooks to go through the process of, of creation and publication, which means that by the time that it comes to the students, it's could be completely irrelevant, right? Um, I, we, we always joke about the ESL textbooks because they still have things like, have you heard of the World Wide Web? Right? <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, what, what are we talking to our students about here? Um, and are, are they going to just throw the book at me? Um, and it, it also is often very, you know, not relevant to them, not interesting. It's a roll of the dice in that, right? Um, and it's definitely not customized to your students and to what they're interested in and what they like. So, you can actually use ChatGPT to uh, to build this custom content that is absolutely directly relevant to your students. So what I do at the beginning of the semester is I do a survey. So I get them onto a Google Forms and I say, well, what are the things that you're interested in? Who are your favorite actors? What are your favorite sports teams? Whatever it is. And then I can pull those things into my content and build it out for my students that's relevant to the things that they actually like and care about. So whatever that is, whatever content you're talking about, you can, you can completely customize it. So um, the reason that I kind of, this kind of struck my struck me as I was doing a presentation up in Salinas Valley um, 
which you may know is, uh, you know, Steinbeck, an agricultural country out there. And, and all of these textbooks have this tendency to treat um, uh, the world as though everybody lives in Los Angeles, New York City, or London, right? And it's like, that's the whole world. And we go, well, hold on a second. There are other places and people living different kinds of lifestyles. So how do we customize that for them? And uh, so we can actually go in there and ask ChatGPT uh, to create custom content to focus on agricultural business, right? Um, if you're teaching history, you can have it build content around your neighborhood, or you can just tie in people who might be interesting around Around the area. So, um, so we could do something just briefly like that. So uh, maybe we say, um, uh, write a short essay about the history of uh, uh, farming in the Salinas Valley. Okay. Now, of course, this might be available out there, but you can completely customize it. And so now I've got content that I can actually work with with my students that's relevant that they understand and that they know about, right? And so um, when I'm saying, hey, you know, if you're in Salinas, you're, you're probably not going to move out to some major city and become, you know, a, a, a a, a city person, maybe you're going to say, hey, this has been my family, this is what I'm going for. And so I want content that's really relevant to them and powerful and useful for them as well. Um, so again, this is just a brief, brief overview of some of the things that you can play around with and get into. Uh, but all of this stuff is easily and quickly available to you if you're, uh, if you're just willing to jump in there and give a couple tries and see what comes out of it. Um, so I know that we wanted to make sure that we gave time because there's going to be questions and answers. So I, I did move very fast through all of that. Um, I'm happy to go back and kind of revisit some of these, uh, but let's uh, let's get a um, let's get some of the questions and, and and chat conversation in here so that we can we can share together. Um, and it's not just me, but it's everybody. <laughs> To the chat, we have a question in the Q&A section, and then we have Sarah who um, has raised her hand to talk. So we'll start with um, in the Q&A section. Mm -hmm. um, Susan has asked, um, are there any ways to set age parameters on ChatGPT 3.5 uh, to screen out the Snoop Dogg-like content? So everything that you do right now, there are no parameter settings, but you create your own parameters, right? Um, so I don't know if I would totally trust that. Uh, you know, you, you do have to go and look for it uh, to make sure that you really understand what's going on. But um, but you can set anything. So you could say something like, um, uh, uh, let's try let's try it and see what happens. Create a rap battle between. Um, Nicholas Cage and Snoop Dog. Uh, the audience is, uh, you know, uh, junior high school students. So please leave out any profanities or uh, references to drugs. Let's see if it works. Um, so here we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, gather around. Uh, God, you're going you're gonna to make me rap on this one again. I'm not going to try <laughs> it here, but uh, we can see. So one, it does make all sorts of things, but it says, Snoop Dogg, why don't you start us off? Let's hear your rhymes. Let's hear your cough. You may have started in some movies, Cage, but I've always been uh, on top since I was young all the way to this age. So we can see that there's uh, no profanity in here. I don't see any references to drugs or anything like that. Um, Obviously, I had to write it into the prompt. So if I'm doing that directly in front of my students, then you know, there maybe maybe that's something I have to be a little bit careful. But yeah, Adnan is putting in there. Maybe you could put um, keep the content PG. Yeah, you can play around with all of these things. So it's it's really um, the, when you're interacting with these things, you're making the choices in terms of what you want it to put out, right? So if you don't give it guidance, uh, it will just come up with whatever it wants. But if you start setting up those guide rails on it, then you'll start to see that it will um, it, it will do its best to line up with what you're asking for. Excellent, thanks. I'm going to um, uh, unmute uh, Sarah here and she can um, ask her question. So super grateful for this conversation. Um, I've been uh, exploring 
with uh, younger folks and sort of mid-career people, the impact of AI on everything, but uh, literally everything. But I am in education and I'm uh, and I'm in particularly in college admission. I read files for LMU actually for a while. Um, and I'm curious, you, you mentioned the recommendations a little bit. Um, and I'm curious if you have a little more input into essay writing for students. I mean, for me, it's particularly interesting, you know, when they're writing them for college admission um, mm -hmm. or the impact on, on college admission of AI in particular. So that would be so helpful. Yeah, so I, <laughs> so he, here's the, so, uh, sorry, Sarah, just to clarify, are you talking about like knowing whether or not they wrote their own um, applications or? Yeah, you... yeah, 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 exactly. And, and the, you know, I think they're going to try and the colleges themselves are sort of coming up with ideas about, you know, how to address that. But but yeah. And 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 again, not punitive, but more collaborative because, Correct. Yeah. You, said you, you know, you can't stem the tide. Wouldn't yep. want to. So. Yeah. yeah, so I think that this is really kind of upon all of us to figure this out, right? I, I don't necessarily have the answers to that. I think that this is what the real conversation amongst educators is, right? Is to say, well, hold on a second, because we've got these um, detectors, right? The um, GPT-0 and Turnitin came up with their one, and they've got all these different things, and you can click on a button, and it says, how likely is it to be written by AI? Um, and so I've got a pretty serious problem with those uh, because they are not guaranteed to be right. Um, and in fact, you can go and look at those things and they say, well, uh, we've got, you know, an 80 to 90% accuracy on this. So I say, okay, well, in a class of 25 uh, students for me, an 80 to 90% accuracy means that you're giving me false information or a false positive or, or a false negative on uh, anywhere from two to five students inside of my class. And I don't know which students they are that you're getting me the wrong information for. So now I'm going out and I'm pursuing like criticizing my students or telling them that they cheated somehow or whatever that is. Um, that's a real problem for me, right? So I'm gonna, I, I personally am very concerned about people chasing down the, um, the uh, detectors because I just don't think they're gonna last for very long and the quality of this writing is just getting better and better. Uh, I've also had a colleague who gave his own writing inside of it and it called him a, uh, an AI, <laughs> you know, it's a, it said you're, you're very likely to be written by AI just because he'd written by kind of common standards for academic writing. Um, and so, so this is where we're really dealing with this. Um, uh, I don't have, I'm not going to have a great answer for you, Sarah, because I don't know that it exists at this point. I think what we need to do is figure out ways to engage students and, and applicants enough to the point where they say, hey, this is going to be something that I actually value spending my time on, right? Um, and I I, I unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the total answer on how to do that every single time. This is the redirection and the massive change that we're really dealing with here in uh, education is to say, well, hold on a second. How, what, what are the quality of my assignments? Is, is it to the point where the students are just not interested in doing this? And then how do I start making, asking, and, and really the, the, the answer that I do have is, ask your students, what's what's going on with this? Why would they want to possibly plagiarize? What would make it more interesting for them to want to get involved with it, right? Um, and we won't always have the perfect answers, um, but I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. Students are plagiarizing anyways. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter if this is out there, right? Um, and not all students, right? Uh, and in fact, that those numbers, you know, we say they go up, they go down, but like that's always existed, right? They've had access to ghostwriters. They've had access to, um, you know, uh, to these types of services or having their brother or sister help them out or whatever else it is. Um, so I, th this is where I get into that, that plagiarism conversation as well. What are we doing about it? Are we trying to build a system of trust, and, and this is very a lot harder, Sarah, for uh, for college admissions because they don't know you, right? And so they're just sending it off to a stranger. Inside of the classroom, I can say, hey, I know you. I'm working with you to try and help you get through this process, um, and hopefully, I'm building a bond of trust with my students so that they don't want to cheat. And if they if they or if they are using ChatGPT to do their writing for them, I can say, well, why are you asking me to grade this then, right? Um, but uh, in a further setting where you're kind of separated from everything, um, 
I, I don't I don't know exactly, but um, I did find one of the things, which is the these college admissions uh, exams are you know they're always so focused on like what are the what are the problems that you've overcome in your life? Essentially, tell me all of your trauma, and then I'm going to use your trauma to judge whether or not you're good enough to get into this school, which is such a painful <laughs> approach to to asking students to become students, you know, like uh, and so I, I would say that like one are the prompts engaging for the students, and and are they things that are really um, you know, uh, things that help them make the value for everything. Uh, but, but I am sorry that I'm not going to have that perfect answer, like the one that just crushes it for um, how to, how to ensure that people aren't using this in, in uh, nefarious ways, I guess. And then Brent, in that same kind of aspect, Elizabeth asked, would school be alerted that I'm using this for help? Uh, that's up to your school's IT. Um, so, so if you're sorry, is that are you talking about from a student's perspective or is that from a teacher's perspective? Uh, I, I'll get. I'll, I guess I'll answer for both. Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so one, uh, if you're a student, um, if you're on a school's network, the school can, you know, technically probably has the rights to see whatever you're doing on the school network. Um, and so, so possibly if you're depending on how your IT is set up at your school, um, ours basically like there's a, you know, a, an agreement that when you're logging on in online that you're doing safe stuff. So um, we've had, you know, people access inappropriate materials and uh, they have gotten caught for it. Um, but uh, but when we have things like uh, ChatGPT, you know, if there's no rule against it, then, I, you know, then they might not be blocking it. You'll have to check with your own school. As a teacher, same, same type of deal. I'll say that students or teachers can all log into their phones on the network and, and all of these tools exist on your phone. So you're, if you're not using the school's Wi-Fi, but if you're using your own connection, then and the school doesn't really have control over what you're doing with that. Um, you know, and again, every school has their own rules and you have to kind of be careful of what the policies are there. Uh, one more in the Q&A. Christine, you want to cue yeah. that one up for us? Yes, of course. Nancy asked, what was the app you used to record your voice and create text to voice output? Oh, yeah. What was that called? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me find it for you. Hold on. Hold on one second. Sorry. Um, you know what? I can't remember at the moment. Uh, it was so the one that, that had the video was D dash ID. Um, the other one, there's there's quite a few of these things out here. I'll, I'll find it uh, and I'll, I'll put it into the links uh, or I'll put it into the slideshow because I know that Shannon is going to share out the slide deck uh, later with links. So I'll make sure that that is in there as well. Um, but uh, there are a few of these things that are. Um, let's see. Uh, Speechify is one that I know that a uh, a colleague was using, so that's that's a possibility. Um, I found one that was like I can't remember what it's called. It's it's not these ones, um, but I think it was like. I was willing to pay for it. I think it was like $5 or something like that. So some of these things are not free, but I'm just experimenting with them. I will find the specific one that I did and uh, share it with you uh, inside of the links a little bit later. Sorry about that. Uh, my default is still Google and not barter Bing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I actually don't at the moment, I still don't think that they're great for um, for searching. I think that they're there. You know, they can be, but uh, but I don't totally trust them for that. So. Um, so, yeah, uh, Bing is uh, tricky because it, it, it shuts off after a couple of minutes of conversation. Um, Bard is a little bit more, but you but I can't use it. This is this is my school account and, and Bard is not available for uh, for school accounts at the moment. Oh, we are running out of time. Uh, so, <laughs> um, just to be uh, to, just to respect everybody's time out, I'm happy to stay on a couple minutes longer. If people have questions or want to speak uh, speak out or share ideas, I'm totally happy to stay. Uh, but if you have to go, uh, you can find me on a couple of these spots uh, where I'm playing around with some things. Um, please feel free to reach out or follow up with questions uh, later if you are so inclined. Um, and like I said, uh, this slide deck will be included with the materials that Shannon will send out later. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Brent. I do have one last slide. Sure. Um, I appreciate um, Brent's time and, and talent and expertise that he shared with us today. 
Um, we do want to thank you. We are at uh, exactly 59 minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a bit.ly here. Christine will drop it in the chat. And uh, there is a QR code on your screen as well that you can scan to just give us a little bit of feedback on the webinar um, that we've done today. And um, uh, there is an opportunity for you to let us know what other topics you might be interested in um, on this. We'd love to continue the conversation about artificial intelligence and chat GPT like products in the classroom for teachers and students and administrators as well. So um, let us know. We do have some contacts um, that we've been reaching out to to schedule another web a webinar. Um, and we'd hope to have a couple over the summer as you guys are thinking about how you might use it as your TA in your classroom, or even how you might um, use it as part of your curriculum um, integrated into some of the work that you might be doing with your students. So once again, thank you uh, to everyone that joined us today and thank you to Brent for your time. And um, this webinar will be posted, like I said, on YouTube, on a couple different channels, as well as an audio version. And we will be sending out links to that within the week uh, to just give me some time to edit it and put it all together. So by next week, uh, Wednesday, you should have it in your inbox, everybody that registered. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We appreciate uh, everyone that gave their time today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much.